Hello Nico people, I'm Nazim Davids. I'm one of the people behind the very, very popular Anika page on Facebook. I've had numerous requests and inquiries from lots of international viewers and followers of the page as to who these people are who lead the choirs in all the footage that they view on, on, on Facebook and TikTok as well for that matter. And um, so I've decided that we're going to start a short series on all the people that lead our choirs. In Cape Town we call them the lead singers, the four singers in Afrikaans. And one of my personal favorites, and uh, I'm somebody who says it as it is, is Rafik Domingo. And Rafik, shukran for making yourself available. Thank you. Afwan, shukran for having me. Shukran for having me. Who is Rafik Domingo? Um, personal, in my personal life, I'm a grandson, I'm a son, I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm a brother, I'm a uncle, I'm, I'm an art director, I'm, I'm a barber. And ah, then, a barber? <laughs> I, I have a barber as well. And um, a Netherlands singer and a coach. Um, so that was actually an uh, interesting question, Anke Nazim, because I couldn't answer this. I, I, if, I, if I look, I couldn't answer it. So I made a poll on Instagram, and I had people answer it for me, like, who is Rafik Domingo? So what you, is... You were cu curious to know what, how people saw you? Basically, yeah. So the Rafik Domingo you're telling us about is what your friends and I, followers actually perceive. Yeah, as I found it. I found it difficult, and I actually wrote it down because I'm, I'm I can't remember all the stuff. Um, so they gave they gave me a few stuff. They told me honest, wise, straightforward, creative, energetic, kind-hearted, confident, funny, selfless, bold, understanding, God-fearing, always late, um, dedicated, talented. Professional, welcoming and loving, passionate, friendly, hardworking, proactive, caring, determined, organized, perfectionist, charismatic, and late again. Okay, so, <laughs> so, so we've got a very apt and comprehensive description of who Rafi to me. Yeah. That is what I want to do. Now. Okay. Our Cape Malay choir culture, I know is very close to your heart, it's very close to my heart, it's very close to many, many people. When and where did your participation in this amazing culture of ours start? My journey started when I was very small, I, I, since birth. Um, I remember one year, it was 1992, I think, um, my grandfather, Starlight's practice at our house yes. in Ottery. I think Gaji was in, in Maka that year and the team practice were our house. Um, they sang Salik Dan Milifred Newman, but uh, Amin Abram Zauraham, he sang, and Ta Badruddin sang that year as well. Yes. And I was a small boy with a guitar with a starlight track suit in every practice. Um, yeah, that's how, that's how it started for me and my love just grew and grew and grew for Malay choirs until. My uncle asked me to join Young Min 2005, yeah. yeah. I was with Young Min 2005 for three years. I was with Young Min. For two, I never actually went, I never took stage in 2005. They had the on. Uh, I remember. Anka Sali sang Suits uh, the Joe Barber was the comic. I never took stage that year. The next year I took stage. Because of school I never took stage. Um, the next year I took stage 2006. They sang Achbat Basse Nooit Geboren. Um, yeah. So well, I remember all the liches over there. Yeah, we, we changed in the, in the top eight, we changed liches. We sang Achbat Basse Nooit Geboren, we won. But we changed in the top eight and we sang Vrikat. Okay. In the top eight that year, we had grey suits on. Anka Mana Rakham was the coach. Anka Sali sang. Anka Wani sang comic that year. They, that's where Anka Munip Domingo he introduced me uh, to Malay choirs again. So the, this was, so you said it started about 1992, that's a long time. Yeah. 21 years ago. What? 30, 30 years ago? 32, 30, <laughs> yeah, 32 years ago. Wow. 32 years ago. 
Who would think that you actually started with Young Min? I started with Young Min. Young Min is very dear to my heart. Young Min, Young Min was my first team. By, by a team at the time as well. Like, it was a team full of legends. But then, we were going to the Ala Aragam. But man, it was it, it's a team. Yeah, ooh, it was a team full of legends. It was just legends. Yeah, I was with him. You know that uh, uh, you mentioning all of this, and that is one of the reasons why I firmly believe we don't follow a particular set of questions. Yeah. Because you raised something now, and and something that is very pertinent, especially seeing that young men competed on Saturday night, saying, "Oh, Lichi." saying it in a traditional manner and you just raised it almost 20 years ago they sang the same lichi yeah and i'm gonna i'm gonna go away from the script now as a former young men member how did you feel on saturday night when they sang that it was beautiful it was beautiful it, it, it did feel nostalgic to me it, it was it was really beautiful and also like I was the lead singer that I have now Ahamla, I was a part of actually getting him to Young Min okay, okay. because um, I coached the culture shock team that he would have sing for and then the team never took stage I was initially going to take him to Rangers really? I was going to take him to Rangers because Rangers never had anybody and then um, yeah Rangers was like me Jay Mutsun okay. and then I felt bad because I already spoke to Shoei about okay. about the Rangers and then I phoned but I used to tell him boom and Angela Nan Morris I phoned him and I told him I have a full singer and they took it yeah and it and it's a success story yeah alhamdulillah <laughs> it's it's uh, it's amazing if we look at all the comments on social media on on that young men's lead how people create the traditional itches. Yeah, yeah. Now that life cuts both ways. Yeah, right. it does. So we've got all these people. The outcry is they spoiling the liches. Um, people don't recognize the liches, and that is one of my questions to you. We got kind of jumping the gun. How do you feel having heard the, the young men sing that lit? It wasn't exactly like the original lead. Yeah. They, they made a change up front, but anyway, they stuck to it. How do you feel about that type of rendition and some of our more modern Netherlands rendition? Ankin Azim, I am all for innovation. I am all for innovation because, like, okay, can you broaden that innovation? Yeah, yeah like, like, if 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 I feel tradition is a funny word because tradition. Tradition is how one perceives tradition. True. Because if I'm looking at tradition, then I will look at the 30s. And then we're the biggest innovators. You, you know? So, uh, so like in the 70s and the 80s, the strum came like. Kran -tang 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 -kran -tang. I hope, yes. Yeah. But in the in in, in like thirties and, and 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 prior to that they, they were like, like kran -tang 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 -tang. so what are Slowly. we so we we already innovated as well. So. I'm all, you, we can't also have uh, the people from the seven like every era have its own sound. Okay. Every era have its own sound. We can't sound like the seventies. A, a perfect example: Ivanka Nazim is going to go to England now. Are you going to go with a ship or airplane? Actually, I like cruise. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you see, I, I love the, the the response. I'll tell you why I'm a musician. Yeah. Right? So. One of the biggest things that came out of Culture Shock for me was the music. Yeah. I love that intros with the saxophone. Oh, yeah. brilliant. I said to Angelira, take stage with the sax. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I would implement it in an instant. I feel it's, it, it just made the offering the rendition so much more beautiful. I say was a was a videographer based for state Ragman. Ravik, the coaching side of Ravik Domingo, where did that start? 
I was basically thrown in the deep end with that part. It's an interesting story. Um, I was at Ottomans and the late coach, with Dapoy Aragam, Abdurrahman Davids, yes. he passed away. And apparently he told the ex-co weeks before he passed away that I must coach. And then 2017, I was coaching. <laughs> and the, the, then a new panel was obviously chosen, like myself for Netherlands, Moesa for Comic, Moesa yes, Parker, yes. Amir um, Williams for Combine, but Amir Williams, the head, coach, the, head, yes. the head coach as well. So everything that we do, we run past Amir. And it was, it was interesting that I learned a lot. I learned a lot. Um, as a new coach, I learned a lot. The first lit I did was treatment lit na the Zulalan. Second was a Kenyan lit. The third was Zeman's hoop that I did. That was the three that I did. Seeing that you mentioned what lit you have done, your absolute favorite over the years, which lit? These liches that I never say that I feel is a favorite. No, no, the ones that you personally say. I feel Zeman's hoop and the Groot Vogelen. That we just sang now. That you just say. Yeah. And liches you haven't done, if there's one lit that you would like to do in the near future, which one would it be? I like Alstad Soon. Alstad Soon? Yeah. I like Alstad Soon. Good choice. I like Alstad Soon. Beautifully. I like Alstad Soon. Like, the, the liches that I chose is because of, 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 of my favorite force in this. So is it now, is it now Ali Abrams? Was it going to be? Um, I, have, I, have, I have a long list. That was my I, I, I appreciate a lot of lead singers. I, like from from the traditional part yes. and like to modern times. I have I have quite a few. I have um, Tata Auraham, yes. Tahasan, Veren. Yes, he, he's on top. Ah, yeah, he's surprising. on top. Surprising. May I ask why? His ideas. He's he's he's. he's the way the way you think is, is I, I don't think I will be able to think like it. Okay. Um, then I have the Amin Abrams Aragam. He was also uh, like I used to watch him the a lot. The Abrams family. Yeah. Then I then Amin Anka Amin Vadin. Then I have the Ismail Galan. Then I have and I have a lot. I have Anka Khay Anka Khay Aragam Abrams. Yes, yes, yeah. Was also, I was actually going to ask you. Gai Abrams' version of Als Dit Soon or Ali Abrams? Anke Gai. Okay. Anke Gai. Anke Gai. Yeah, you, like, I don't know. It's because I was so close to him as well. Yes. Um, the influence. Yeah, he was, he was one of my, my favorite singers ever. Ravik, our time is almost up. As a coach, as a young coach, working with a lot of youth, what is the biggest challenges? For me personally, the biggest challenge is to keep the youth inspired. Like, they don't want to be in a boring club, Skama. So, that, for me, that's the biggest challenge, keeping them inspired. And, and having, them, having them inspired now is... is of course, winning is... is yeah, 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 yeah. Winning, winning, but yeah. Yeah. Nobody wants to be at the team that don't win. So, Ask me about that. But, but um, keeping them inspired is the biggest thing. And that's why I don't... Um, that's why I love innovation. Because innovation is what's keeping them... They want to do that stuff. What, you you're, saying, what you're saying is important. Because... Our older generations, they cling to what they know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The youth again, the youngster of today, he identifies differently. Yeah. And then I've had this debate on radio, with, and it's always very interesting. The older generation refuses to see yeah. that this youngster will identify with a Rafi Domingo. This is my generation. Yeah. So, one way of attracting the youth is to innovate. And I feel, and I feel to innovate, and I also feel, for the fraternity, I feel, this venue is also big. Because not now, now, youth can say they sang on the stage of Baxter Theatre. So I feel that, that was, that was also a good thing. Uh, like, we, we need to, 
we need to be cool for for youth. Like even with Netherlands, that's really not cool. It's a it's a it's a thing that you can't. It's not a cool thing, Netherlands. It's a beautiful <laughs> thing for us because we yes, grew up we with, grew it. Up with it. it. But we have to make it cool for the youth. We have to make it cool. We have to make it something that they want to be a part of. A few of your ideas to make the Netherlands cool. I'm, I'm very curious. So, I start... I first want to know the storyline of the lead. Because it's a story that yes. we're telling. So the whole feel of the lead must be... You must tell the story. That's why I include violence. That's why my break... I, it starts from my break. Because, like, before I start the litchi, I tell the, the team the story of the litchi. Okay, so they understand what so they're they singing. So they understand what they're singing. So I tell the team the story of the lit, and then from there, we, yeah. So they know what they're singing, they will apply every line to the feel of, of the lit. And, and once they feel like they're telling a story, they feel like they're winning, so they will want to be a part of it. Yes. Yeah, so like it's, it's everything. I start from break with music. There's there's fillers. There's there's like small interludes that the lit you have. Yes. There's 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 stuff that the violence must do in order for me to remember what yes. I must do. St- stuff like that. So it's basically everything. Everything that we do. Like the lit is not just for me. A lit is not anymore. Like krang tang zang zang like yes. and sing and uh, the we we. We must portray the story. We can't. We can't sing. Um, we can't sing a litchi where somebody's dying and and be like and be happy okay, about okay. it. You know, so what you say, the tempo yeah. should be true to the the, the, the whole the feel of the litchi. Yeah, the whole feel. In that way, we'll, we we so that in that it's also like what people will think it's innovation, but it's not. We just portraying the the story. We portraying the story better. Our time is just about up, Rafik. One of the challenges we face is exactly what you said earlier: to keep the youth interested. But the biggest challenge is to actually attract them. Yeah. To the choir, over and above the economic challenges and socio-economic challenges, what would you say we should do to attract more youngsters into this culture? Do you feel that we're threatened, that it could be dying out, or do you feel now, okay, there's definitely new interest? If we look at our choirs today, I was very pleased to see all the youngsters. Um, do you think we're okay? Or what can we do to attract more youngsters to the Scape Malay Choir tradition? Yeah, this is, this is a, a very controversial question. I feel it can cause a controversy a bit. But I feel that we need to involve the youth mu- like much more. They need, like social media is there. Yeah. Social media is, is... Powerful. Yeah. Also, also like... When we say we, are we talking about the powers that be at the moment? Are you talking about the choirs? I feel millennials need to come through. I feel millennials need to come through with the the advice or, or overseeing of the people that come before us. I call myself okay, as a millennial. So what you're saying is, in our top structure, let's take, for example, the Cape Malay Choir Board. We need more millennials in there. We yeah, need people with fresh ideas. No, we definitely. need people who know what the youth definitely. want and who can connect with the youth. Definitely. What we say is we need a Rafik Domingo. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna cause a lot of work. that's that's a lot of work. No, I I like I feel I feel like twenty years ago the people in charge of the the, the fraternity was our age. They were thirty five. They were relevant at the time. It's twenty years later. They've lost touch. Uh, yeah, I won't say that. No, no, <laughs> but they don't understand this audience they talk. Yeah, like we're gonna keep on attracting the older, the older folk. And we want to change that. And we want to change that. So I feel that that we need to make space or room for millennials to come through. We need to we need to make space for that because if what's what's going to happen in a few years time, if all the old people, all the old people's died. not there anymore. The youth is not going to be interested in it so because we they weren't included, okay. basically. So we need a plan to develop that youth 
and slowly infiltrate them into yeah that, that I feel I feel I feel that because also the youth is also powerful on social media you yes. don't you don't sell something on Aug on the August anymore in classifieds no. <laughs> you post it on Facebook absolutely so yeah I feel that our youth our youth is if if people if we think if we keep thinking of that's not how we did it in in the past then we have a very dark future that's it folks Rafi Domingo pouring is very very hot out bearing his soul we say shukran to Rafi to joining us thank you to Rafi for joining us today our first video in the series we're gonna put it up let us know what you think um, and we'll be back next week with another one thank you again Rafi shukran, shukran. shukran for having me absolute pleasure We'll see you again next, folks, people.